In this video lecture, I'm going to be discussing Bayes' formula, also commonly known as Bayes' theorem or Bayes' law. Um, so, Bayes' formula is a formula related to a two-stage experiment, and it describes the probability of some event occurring based on prior knowledge of um, other conditions that may be related to the event. So in particular, suppose that we have n events, and I've labeled it f1 to fn. And suppose that these n events, f1 to fn, satisfy conditions 1 and 2. The first of which is that they are mutually exclusive, meaning that they are disjoint, or that the intersection of any pair of events from f1 to fn is empty. Right, so given a sample space S, which is what I've drawn with the black pen, I have then um, partitioned S to include the events F1 to Fn and observe that <clears throat> using the red pen here I've highlighted event F1 followed by F2 and the manner in which it is drawn preserves or satisfies the condition that each of these events are mutually exclusive to the other. The second condition is that the union of all of the the n events must then equal to the sample space and once again based on the way that it has been drawn f1 to fn um, once again if you union them or essentially kind of added them together you would get back the whole of the sample space s and now we are going to introduce the the additional conditions that's now going to affect the probabilities that we are going to calculate and that is event e so there's additional conditions are coming in from event e so we let E be an event that is in your sample space whose probability is positive or gre strictly greater than zero. Then we would like to calculate the conditional probability of one of these n events occurring, so one of f1 up to fn, where i runs from 1 to n. Given that E has occurred, which is these additional conditions that I have been, the prior conditions that I've been mentioning. Right, so Bayes' law, Bayes' formula, or Bayes' theorem now gives you a, uh, a formula for you to calculate this. And it says the following, that the probability of one of the n events occurring, so I'm just going to denote it as fi, given that event E has occurred, which is the additional condition, is equal to the probability of event fi, being multiplied to the conditional probability of E given Fi. And then we divide by a similar product, as I've written in the numerator, being added together where we now run through each of the n events that has occurred. So I will then calculate probability of F1 being multiplied to the probability of E given that F1 has occurred, then add it to the probability of F2, multiply it to the probability of E, given F2 has occurred, and continue. So if we will change the I in here. So this is probability of, I'm now going to change the index, such that J can now run from 1 to N. So essentially, it's the same formula, but now we run through each I. So we will do it for F1, F2, F3, and so on, up to and including Fn. So if I wanted to write it out in full, this is just the probability of Fi multiplied to the probability of E given Fi, divided by, and now that becomes the probability of F1, times the probability of E given F1, plus the probability of F2, times the probability of E given event f2 and continue all the way up to and including n. So probability of fn multiplied to the probability of e given fn has occurred. So it's essential that you have the entire list of events um, whose union is the whole of s because you will be running through each of its probabilities in the sum as well as the conditional probabilities related to the event e which is actually those the additional uh, external factors that's now affecting the probability calculation. So this is Bayes' formula and it's important for you to know and understand it. Let's look at an example. Right, so example one is about quality control and it says the following. A digital camcorder manufacturer uses one microchip in assembling each camcorder. Now these microchipped 
microchips are sourced from three different suppliers. So you've got supplier A, B, and C, right? And even though it's sourced from each of these suppliers, it's, uh, the microchip is randomly picked when uh, the camcorder is being assembled. So as a result, the probability of using a microchip from supplier A is 20%. The probability of obtaining a camcorder from supplier B is 35 and then the probability of using a microchip from supplier C, since it's the remainder, 20 plus 35 is 55. So the remaining out of 100 is 45. So let's just make a note of that. Let's let A denote the event that we've gotten it from supplier A. We will then let B denote the event that we have got a microchip from supplier B, C the event that it's a microchip from supplier C. All right. So then the probabilities of getting a microchip from A, B and C, if I had to write that down, probability of A is then equal to, as we've been told, 20%, so that's 0 0.2 probability of B is 35%, 0 0.35, um, and the probability of C, the remaining, as we have discussed, is 0 0.45. Okay, so based on the past experience, the manufacturer believes that the probability that a microchip from A is defective is 0 0.03. So, this is essentially a conditional probability, but in order to understand it, we have to define a thought event. So we shall let D denote uh, a defective chip, the event of getting a defective uh, microchip. Right, so in here, what this line that I've underlined is actually telling you is that this is the probability of getting a defective chip from supplier A. So if I had to write that down using conditional probability, right, so then this is the probability of getting a defective chip from supplier A, and we are told that it's 0 0.03. And the corresponding probabilities for B and C are also given. So then this is 0 0.02 corresponds to the probability of getting a defective chip from supplier B and that is 0 0.02 and then finally the probability of getting a defective chip from supplier C is 0 0.01 <coughs> all right so we've got a list of probabilities um, based on suppliers and then a list of conditional probabilities let's just check what are we required to calculate so a camcorder is selected at random from a day's production and its microchip is found to be defective. Right? Find the probability that it was supplied from A. So that is part A. So what are we being asked in part A? Find the probability that um, the microchip is supplied from A given that it is defective. So we want to find probability that supplier A has given us a defective microchip. Similarly, B is telling us <coughs> to compute the probability that supplier B has provided us with a defective microchip. And likewise for part C, probability of C given D has occurred. So quickly assessing the situation and the problem that we have with all of the information, observe that this is indeed a problem that requires the intervention of Bayes' rule or Bayes' formula. The sample space is clearly partitioned by three sets given by A, event A, event B and event C, right, um, as mentioned. So we know that the probability of A is 0 0.2, B is 0 0.35 and here 0 0.45 and then <clears throat> the uh, event which now in, um, sorts of 
adds the additional um, what could I call this conditions that affect our our probability calculations is the event of the chip being defective and there it is here so this is event D which I've now drawn in here so I'm labeling that D so immediately this is a Bayes uh, formula problem and that is how we're going to be solving it right so let's get out another page yes, there is one right and let's perform the calculations keeping in mind what Bayes formula is so I'm going to do part A so we want the probability that supplier A has given us the microchip and given that it's defective so based on Bayes formula remember now that we have three events A B and C so based on that our calculation is going to be as follows it is then going to be equal to the probability of A multiplied to the conditional probability defective given that it's from A divided by the sum of all of the probabilities with respect to, to A, B and C. So I'm going to write down probability of A multiplied to the probability of D given A. I now write down um, an analogous formula but now I'm substituting in event B in place of A. So this is probability of event B multiplied to the probability of D given B and then once again repeat for event C so replace B by C probability of C multiply to the probability of C given that um, so multiply to the probability of D given that C has occurred right so this is now the formula written down for this problem um, obtained from the generalized formula of Bayes rule that was here so this is written down for arbitrary events F1 to Fn and now I've written it down in relation to events A, B and C. So we have all of the information at our disposal. Let's write down what it is. Probability of A is 0 0.2 multiplied to the probability that we have a defective chip that was supplied by A and that's 0 0.03. I'm taking that down from there. Right, and then in the denominator, I'm going to just copy what I've written at the top. And now I'm going to plug in for the second part. So probability of B, we've seen is 0 0.35. Multiplied to probability of D, given B is 0 0.02. And then repeating there, probability of C is 0 0.45. Multiplied to the probability of D, given C, which is 0 0.01. Alright, and then you can put this into your calculator and simplify and you will find that your answer is 12 over 35. Alright, so get used to application questions of this nature that tests you on Bayes' rule and Bayes' law.